Prime Minister, great to see you again. How Good are to you? see you, Sean. Welcome to Israel. Thank you. It's been a uh, rough five weeks for you. For everyone. For everyone. Every interview that you have given, and yesterday in your press conference, you challenged the world to put themselves in Israel's position. What would you do if your country were attacked by 3,500 rockets? What would you do if tunnels of terrorists were built to, to attack your citizens? I want you to expand on that. Well, you know, I, th I think we're in a, in a terrible conflict with a terrible enemy. And we regret, I personally regret, and the people of Israel regret, every civilian casualty that we have. Israel does not target civilians, it targets the terrorists. But here's what these terrorists are doing. Uh, terrorists like uh, Al-Qaeda and like uh, Hezbollah and like ISIS and like Boko Haram. Hamas is no different. They have absolutely no regard for civilians. So the first thing they do is they target our civilians. They fired 3,500 rockets into our cities, covering 80% of our population. Just imagine 250 million Americans who have to be uh, on alert to get into bomb shelters against incoming rockets into, their, into American cities. You have 90 seconds at most to go into a bomb shelter. That's the first thing they do. They target civilians. Then they dig terror tunnels into our territory so they can send death squads to kill our children, our citizens, and kidnap our people. Imagine that, okay? So what would you do in the United States or in any country that now is not looking at us? What would you say to your government? I would say get them. You'd I say, would say defeat Protect them. us. Protect first of all, us. protect us. I mean, yeah. you'd say protect us. You'd be right to ask that because the government's first obligation, as you know, is to protect its people. Okay, now here comes problem number two. What if they not only target your civilians, so criminally and indiscriminately. What if they hide behind civilians? What if those terror rockets are being fired from schools, from hospitals, from hotels, from private homes? What would you do then? What if the terror tunnels are dug into your nurseries, into your schools, into your kindergartens, from homes, from private homes on their side? Would you give immunity to these rocketeers and to these terrorists uh, and to these death squads? because the point of origin of the attack is deliberately embedded in civilian areas. Well, obviously, you wouldn't. I mean, you would say to the government, no, act against them. Uh, try to minimize civilian casualties, but go against these terrorists because we need to protect ourselves. This is what Israel has been doing. And I think when people are saying you shouldn't take action against them, they have to understand that what they're saying is that the terrorists will enjoy this immunity. You will give them essentially immunity and they'll continue to do this. Uh, I think when the Middle East is swept by this uh, volatile mix, it's now almost a brush fire of terrorist organizations who are using this tactic, targeting civilians while hiding behind civilians. And we are left absolutely defenseless and we say you cannot act. I think that will in ensure that the brush fire spreads throughout the Middle East, throughout North Africa, and I say eventually around the globe. It'll be a tremendous victory for terrorism. Let me ask you this, because Israel went to great pains. We saw leaflets being dropped in areas warning civilians to get out. Right. As I understand, and you can explain the, the, the pains or the, the, the methods that you would use to warn civilians. Text messages, I understand, phone calls were made. All the text, text messages, first of all, leaflets, mm -hmm. text messages, phone calls that you call to a, 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 a building that is used as a, as a terrorist headquarters. And you say to all the people there, look, this is, uh, you're in a military target, please leave, okay? And if they don't leave, you do a demonstration strafing that is non-explosive, okay? And then they leave, and when you see them leave, you attack it. That's basically the procedure from the air. Now, the, uh, in, uh, and I don't know of any country that does that. I just don't know of any army that does that or certainly no one does more than that. I don't know of any army that does more than the Israeli army does to avoid civilian casualties. You're a student of Churchill. Mm. I know you like Winston Churchill. Well, I, and you've studied Winston lot, Churchill. Yeah. Okay, during the bombing of Britain, uh, not only did he walk amongst the people, but secondarily, how did he deal with Germany? He, uh, how did he do it? He carpet bombed cities. Well, I don't want to speak about his Churchill. Modern, in other words, his modern warfare changed. Well, I think we don't use 
carpet bombing, and we don't use deliberate targeting of a single civilian. We are targeting military targets, and sometimes uh, civilians are accidentally killed. You talk about World War II, I'll give you another example of World War II. 1944, the uh, Royal Air Force, the British uh, uh, Air Force, goes out to bomb the Gestapo headquarters in Copenhagen. Perfectly legitimate target. Except the British pilots miss, and instead of hitting the Gestapo headquarters, they hit a children's hospital nearby, and I think some 80 children are horribly killed. That's not a war crime. That's a legitimate act of war against a legitimate target that has incidental and unintended casualties. That accompanies every war. That's, not what, that's what Israel is facing and Israel is encountering, giving warnings, trying not to in any way harm civilians, but sometimes civilians that are put in harm's way deliberately by the Hamas terrorists, they do get in harm's way. That's the whole purpose of Hamas. In the case of the terrorists, they're committing a double war crime. Every rocket that they send here, 3,500 rockets, they were deliberately intended to hit our civilians, and only our civilians. Every terror tunnel that is dug is directed into our civilian areas. So they're deliberately targeting civilians while deliberately hiding behind civilians, using them as a human shield. That's a double war crime. Now, who, is, uh, who are many in the international community accusing of war crimes? Israel, that is behaving in the most legitimate way to defend itself, to avoid civilian casualties, to take the defensive action that any government would have to do, any democracy would have to do under lesser circumstances, and, it, and many have done that. You have challenged. Uh, and I think we shouldn't let the terrorists get away with this. You've challenged the International Committee on this issue of war crimes, mm -hmm. because here they have fired 3,500 rockets into your country and built tunnels into your country, and yet they want to attack Israel in the United Nations. What's your reaction to that? I think it's, it endangers the whole structure of the laws of war in international law, because if I had to, you know, if I had to reduce all of the laws of war into a single sentence, it is this. You divide the world into two, combatants and non-combatants. You can attack deliberately combatants, but not deliberately non-combatants. Those happen. I mean, those uh, casualties accrue, but they're unintentional. Israel acts that way. It attacks combatants and accidentally kills non-combatants. But in the case of the terrorists, it's the exact opposite. opposite. They deliberately attack combatants, non-combatants, civilians, deliberately. And it cannot be that this equation is uh, turned over on its head, because it means that the whole structure of international law, the ability of democracies that respect the laws of war, that respect human rights, that respect civilian lives, that try to minimize civilian lives, they're the ones that are held accountable for the civilian deaths that are caused tragically and horribly by the people who don't care a whit. Hamas, Islamic Jihad, they sacrifice their own people you deliberately. Want, More de civilian deaths, the better from their point of view. You wanted to, in your press conference yesterday, you, you have video evidence of Hamas firing these weapons in these heavily yeah. populated areas from mosques and schools. And what are the press outlets? And you were challenging the press, now that they're not under the intimidation of Hamas, to show their videos. But you were asked specifically not to show video that you had for fear. Well, we had, we had a correspondent. I, I showed a few of these uh, mm -hmm. uh, press footage of people who finally either got out of Gaza or had the courage to to show the truth because just about every one of those 3,500 rockets that were fired at us were fired from <clears throat> densely populated areas and from schools with children around them and so on. Uh, and we showed two such examples. One fired from a hospital and one uh, fired from uh, another civilian installation. There was a third footage that we didn't show because right before the press conference that I held to show how Hamas is firing from densely populated areas, we got a phone call from a correspondent in Gaza. He said, please don't show this in your press conference. My life would be at risk. Is anyone going to intimidate you on anything that you show in Israel? Of course not. This is a free society, free speech. In Gaza, Hamas is intimidating the reporters. They cannot show how Hamas is uh, firing from civilian areas, how it's embedded children into its uh, rocket launching sites. Uh, how it uses UN installations and uses them as military targets, not only to store rockets, but to fire rockets from. It doesn't show also its uh, combatant deaths. It tries to hide the number of combatants who died in order to kick up the so-called proportion. 
So all of that, you know, it's hard for correspondents who fear for their lives to, to show it. I, I can understand that. But I do expect them when they come out of Gaza, if they're very, very brave when they're in Gaza, to report this, to report the truth. Because among other things, we're not only fighting a battle here for justice and for moral clarity, we're fighting here a battle for the truth, for the facts. The facts are that Hamas is responsible for these human deaths. It uses its people as a human shield. And Hamas should be blamed for this and held accountable for this. And coming up, more of my exclusive interview with Israeli